The high five was invented in 1977. Now look, I've been in the weird facts game for a long time now, but few tidbits have ever jarred me quite like finding out that arguably the world's most iconic ham gesture is younger than the world's most iconic ham jester, which is what I call John Ham. The handshake, for comparison, is believed by anthropologists to have been invented in prehistoric times before the written word even existed. The high five was invented the same year Jimmy Buffett released Margaritaville. While the low five, also called slapping skin, was around in African American culture since the 1920s, it wasn't until the Carter administration that someone finally cracked the code and took it up high. There are actually a few different origin stories, but let's start with the most widely known. The day was October 2nd, 1977. The location was Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. The men were Dusty Baker and Glenn Burke. The number one song in America was the Star Wars theme slash cantina bland. That's 100% true by the way, but it's not the point. The story goes like this. The Dodgers were trying to break the very specific record of having four players each hit 30 home runs in a season, because if there's one thing baseball loves even more than financially exploiting minor leaguers' childhood dreams, it's weirdly specific records. In the sixth inning, Dusty Baker hit his 30th homer, and as he came around the bases, a rookie named Glenn Burke excitedly put his hand up in the air, and Baker, unsure of what he should do, slapped it. Seemingly, Baker put about as much thought into this landmark moment in hand history as I put into writing this video, saying simply, quote, his hand was up in the air, and he was arching way back, so I reached up and hit his hand. It seemed like the thing to do. It turned out it was, in fact, the thing to do. The Dodgers soon adopted the High Five, even putting out advertisements about the High Five that now read like a Strange Planet cartoon, which detail that the quote, High Five salute is quote, given customarily following a home run or Dodgers victory. But while the Dodgers loved the High Five, they didn't so much love its inventor, Glenn Burke, mainly because of who he loved. If you've ever been a gay baseball player in the 1970s, you'll know that it was a difficult time to be a gay baseball player. I could go into more depth, but I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain homophobia. If you want more information, you can read Clarence Thomas's Descent in Dobbs or watch any mainstream comedy made in the early 2000s. Things are much better now, of course, which is why since Burke's coming out, there have been literally ones of openly gay professional baseball players. Burke was pushed out of the league after only four years, though he went on to compete in the 1982 Gay Olympics and become a star in the San Francisco Gay Softball League, even making the high five into a symbol of gay pride in the Castro District. The Burke Baker story is the most widely accepted high five origin story, and likely the one with the best claim. But much like calculus, lightning rods, and this thumbnail, the high five has multiple claimed inventors. The most plausible other origin comes from the 1978 1979 University of Louisville basketball team, known as the Doctors of Dunk, because they were famous for playing above the rim. Not to be confused with the Doctor of Dunk, which is what I call the man who draws my blood behind Dunkin' Donuts. One day in practice, forward Wiley Brown went to give his teammate Derek Smith a classic low five. But that day, Smith stopped stopped him, stared Brown directly in the eyes, and said, no, a pie. Likely the coolest thing anyone has ever said until the time Joe Biden said there are at least three genders, don't play games with me, kid. Brown said he understood up high to be in commemoration of how their team played basketball up high, and accordingly, reached up and gave Smith what they claimed to be the first high five. And there's evidence to back them up. In fact, you can see the high five in archival footage of the Cardinals 78-79 season. There are also a number of assorted other origins. Some high five historians claim it began in the 1960s on the women's volleyball circuit, though there's not much documentation. Magic Johnson claims he invented the high five when he played basketball at Michigan State. But then again, Magic Johnson also claimed the Atlanta Hawks could make the finals in 2015, which I'm now realizing is a reference none of you will understand, but trust me, it was dumb. There's even one widely publicized version claiming a basketball player named Lamont Sleets invented the high five in high school, which turned out to be an elaborate hoax by two comedy writers who randomly picked the Lamont Sleets name out of a record book. Now, I know that people are going to comment on this video that surely two people slapped palms above their head before 1977. And that's true. A high five can be seen, for example, here in the 1960 French New Wave movie Breathless when two characters say goodbye after making a plan. But the high five isn't just a physical action. A high five is also an idea, inherently tied to the meaning it conveys, celebration. And it wasn't until the late 70s and early 80s that the act of slapping palms above your head was, first off, called a high five, but more importantly, was understood to have that celebratory meaning. And if you don't understand that, I invite you to go ahead and give yourself a good old fashioned high five right in the face. You know what can feel like getting high fived in the face? Waking up. Especially when right after you wake up, you start scrolling Twitter and basically get high fived in the face by an algorithm optimized for maximum outrage slash annoyance. 
That's why I've been starting my mornings with Morning Brew, the free daily newsletter that comes Monday through Sunday and keeps me up to date with the latest stuff in business, finance, and tech in just five minutes. Knowing who invented the high five is, of course, an unbelievable factoid sure to make you unfashionably popular, but the news Morning Brew brings you is, like, actually useful, both for staying informed and making smart decisions. You don't need to skim headlines or suffer through long, dense articles that just want to waste your time. Morning Brew breaks everything down into clever, bite-sized blurbs that tell you exactly what you need to know and nothing more. Just this morning, I was reading their article on the scam-fueled future of fitness, which was interesting, well-sourced, and most importantly, straight to the point. And again, it's completely free. There's no reason to not at least try it out and see if you like it. It only takes 15 seconds, and it'll make your mornings so much simpler. Just click the button on screen or follow the link in the description to sign up for free today.